Oh my god. Ladies He's and gentlemen, sweeping. The sweep has arrived. For those that are the Denver Nuggets fans, we understand the pain that you're going through. But as Doc and Prof said, if there was no one that was going to help out the reigning, defending, undisputed, most valuable player of the 2020-2021 NBA season, that team was going to get swept. We said, it, we said it last week. People thought that we didn't understand what we were talking about. They thought that we were just trying to troll and do hot takes. But Doc, it came true. Welcome back to another edition. It is Monday morning. Yeah, we may overreact, but it's fine. The podcasting beast, Doc, the god. And the best podcasting machine, the cleaner, he is. Professor Finally. John Gotti, yes, is here, oh, yeah. here, here, yeah. here. Doc, how First you doing today? All, I'm doing good. I'm going to give a big shout out to hopefully one day a sponsor of the show, Duolingo, for this statement. La Escoba está aquí. The broom is here. <laughs> wow. Johnny <laughs> brought out the broom. La Escoba. The broom is here. The Suns have swept those nuggets. But let's go back and set it up here for you. Starting with Friday, weekend of games. We had the Philadelphia 76ers versus the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, and Atlanta, I just feel like they don't have the it yet. Their best moments was on the game one. Now, I will say this. I did say in on Friday that the only way Atlanta would win is if Capella and John Collins had better games. Um, I mean, I saw Collins hit a few shots, but – Ultimately, it's just not enough from both of them. I mean, Collins did get 23, but then Capella only got eight. He did get 16 rebounds, which is awesome. Uh, Bogdanovich showed up. Solomon Hill did not. Um, so they're missing that last person. And, and I know Gallinari gets a good chunk of minutes as well as Kevin Huter. Um, I almost said it might be time to really unleash Lou Williams. Um, and I would almost go to say that it might be time to start Lou Williams because of his playoff pedigree um, and bring Bogdanovich off the bench with Gallinari and Herder. And Herder. Um, Cause I mean, the way I'm looking at it, it's like they don't have the scoring power from that first offense due to Capella's inability to score. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they can really rely on Trey Young from the beginning because I mean, they're trapping him and they're making sure he doesn't beat him. He has to shoot from the aforementioned previously Jimmer range, now Steph range, also Dame time. Right? They got to shoot from way out there. Right? That's not... As, as Paul George once said, that's not an efficient shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I understand you know. where you're coming with that. Here's what I would say. I would say I wouldn't put uh, Bogdanovich on the bench and have him come off the bench because he does contribute a lot more than what you see on the stat sheet. Of course. The issue is, and this is something that they've <laughs> – reveled with against my Knickerbockers last series mm -hmm. is the fact that they was able to take better quality shots against the Knicks. Way better quality They're not shots. getting that now. No. Okay? The floodgate was open against the Knicks. MSG was like the Hoover Dam. It was open. Well, and also, yeah, you, you do have two 
three, maybe even four really, really solid defenders and, on and the that 76. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, they're really that good. They're switching. Say. They're doing a great job switching. I think that's where the Knicks had a hard time. They had, the Knicks had a hard time with the pick and rolls, um, the, the help defense, you know, switching, where, you know, the 76ers are like, anybody outside of Embiid, we're switching. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, but even Embiid, I think, has done a really good job, um, you know, especially in his latest film, you know, Flopperama. Um, the guy won an Academy Award for most flops in uh, a, a three minute span. <laughs> but um, I feel like he's doing a really good job defensively. And Ben Simmons, I think um, I'm really, really mad at Raphael Stone for not trading with. Daryl Morey in Philly and just taking Ben Simmons if they were offering him for James Harden because it would have been wonderful to build a team around Ben Simmons. Um, I think his inability to shoot has not hindered him, you know, in any way, as we usually would say, it has not hindered the gender. Um, so in my yeah, opinion, yeah, it's... Before, your phrase, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. hinder the gender. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I feel like he he's really, really coming along defensively. He is a problem um, along with Tobias Harris. The only thing I'm worried about with Philadelphia, and this is going to be going forward, is it seems like the season and the playoffs are starting to wear on them as now Danny Green's hurt. Tobias Harris was limping around. Joel Embiid is limping around. Um, so it, that's the only thing I would say could hinder them from going a little further, but they handled the Hawks on Friday. I agree with you there. The other thing that's going to hinder them, and this is something else that I keep talking about time and time again, and it turns out to be a fact, is their free throw shooting. And, and the fact that they've only shot 64% on uh, game three, but I believe for the series they shot like even worse than that. Uh, let me actually get a yeah, 50, uh, 60, uh, five percent from the free throw line. Yeah, that's, that's gonna good, hurt, man. That's gonna Big hurt time. them against a really, really good free throw shooting team. I mean, and granted, Atlanta's shooting 87 percent for the series, but like Atlanta's also not getting buckets. We're talking about no buckets. Not get buckets and get to the free throw line and make their free throws. Yeah, yeah, that's not a good sign. No, I can agree with that. Uh, so I think this series is over. Uh, um, yeah, it's done. Uh, so let's move on to the next series, which is also done. But we'll, we'll cover game three and four with this one since it's over. We know it's over. The people know it's over. And that's the Suns and the Nuggets. Yes, and uh, we mentioned it at the start of this episode that last go by Prop both said that <laughs> if no one else helped out Nikola Jokic, the series is over. It's not going back to Phoenix. Man, the tea went cold. And we don't know why. Yeah. Um, so, I, as we know today, the Suns have swept the Nuggets. La Escoba está aquí. The broom is here. It's out. And it's sweeping up the confetti on the Nuggets floor. The as there were so many Suns fans. The cleaner. Or oh, the cleaner. It's so crazy because there were so many Suns fans in Denver. As they, it's almost like they had the reads. Like we're not gonna see this on our home I floor. Mean, Let's just go to Denver. What we said on Friday. Without really question. About it. Without question. Um, CP3 was a madman last night. Um, I mean, it, he really. It's not just like the will willing the team to win. Like, I mean, he really was carrying them with Booker. And this is kind of what we were talking about with this team going into the bubble last year, doing that eight. No, you know, you have a, a new coach, you know, with the Suns. he's trying to build his reputation. And I love how the commentators talked about how him and Chris Paul, you know, had didn't their see, out. Yes. They I love I, eye eye at all. I but love now that. It's like, it's like they both, you know, came together with the, to a common good, to a common cause. Um, and and I, even Devin Booker mentioned it after the game. He was just like, you know, Chris just brought a totally different personality and it just mm-hmm. meshed so well with what they developed in the bubble, which Doc was just mentioning. 
where yeah. the bubble was when they really developed the culture that they had. And then so, CP3 just took that culture and took it over the top. And I, and I, I do respect that. And that reminds me of what happened initially in Portland when Dame and CJ got there, they were really embodying it and creating this culture. Um, and the thing about it is Monty in this position, and I know Monty had his own things. I, I believe a couple of years ago, he lost his wife. He was coaching on one team and then he yeah, wound up getting that. Yeah. He wound up getting the nod here. And it's like, things are coming together. You get Chris Paul, a, a savvy veteran, somebody that you know is not about self as he was a representative for even the National Basketball Players Association. So here's a guy who you know can lead. And did you just, did you is, just drop a Chris Collinsworth reference? <laughs> I, I somewhat. I, not, <laughs> not intentionally, but here here's a here's a guy um, who really can lead the team in scoring and assist and just being a leader, um, doing savvy veteran things like drawing fouls. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, really, really being a pest on both ends of the floor. Um, and it, it just went in and filled in correct, uh, really, really nicely. Now let's look at the losers here. So let's just skip to the third quarter because <laughs> okay. that's what people want to talk about. We want to talk about it. Talk about it. You want to talk about it. The foul that happened with Jokic and freaking Cameron Payne. Which is apropos. Really apropos because Cameron Payne was ejected in the previous series for something that, in my opinion, was less than this. It was less egregious. Um, neither, none to say, neither, needless to say, he was ejected in that game. And I texted Prof and said, there's no way that Jokic stays in this game. <laughs> I said, there's no yeah. way. And I was um, saying, if he stayed in this game, there is a huge double standard in the league. I mean, we know yeah. there's a double standard in the league. Yeah. But, but if they allow him to stay in this game, yeah. I am going to be very, very upset. Yeah, because, I mean, it was really rough. I mean, obviously, maybe five, seven years ago, we would have been looking at this like, oh, he made a swipe at the ball. Yeah. yeah like, like right a now, <laughs> yeah, the precedent has been set at where LeBron is, apparently, right? Uh, so let's think about this, guys. And they probably thought about it like, hey, if we let him stay – Things could get chippy. Oh, I mean, he, it he, he would have t- gotten very bad. It was a weird swipe, though. Well, it was a weird so swipe. It was frustration because, I mean, even though the game was clapped. still close, <laughs> they were getting no, clapped. No, they, was, they wasn't getting clapped yet. No, nah, they. I think mentally After, they were. Mentally they were. I think mentally they were getting clapped. Mentally they were getting clapped. I can agree with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean wise, like, they were oh. still kind of there. It was 10 points. Yeah. Like, it was still there. In fact, yeah. it was that way until, like, maybe three minutes left in the game, actually. And then it still was only, like, eight, seven, eight points. It, exactly. it never really it never really got out of hand. No. Um, and in my opinion, and this is where I felt where Mike Malone got out coached, and I know, you know, you, you might think I'm joking, but I really, really felt like they needed to go to Bobo. Either Bobo, I don't know if Paul Millsap is hurt, um, but anybody but JaVel McGee, um, who gave them five great five great points and seven rebounds. Um, his points were, were – when he scored, it was at the right time to keep them in the game, and he grabbed some key rebounds. Um, but I really think they needed Bobo, somebody that could actually score from the perimeter and, and clear the paint, or – if Paul Millsap was healthy, they really, really needed to get Paul Millsap in the game. Um, so I'm not sure if Mike Malone is their coach moving forward. Um, I felt like he got out coached, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I would be so inclined to believe that Mike Malone may actually lose his job this offseason. Yeah, they too. It's too. I mean, the the problem is, is that like 
All right, so you lose so, your starting point guard, right? You so lose your I was gonna say, like, like this this series is literally saying if they did not have Jamal Murray, and it showed so much, right? Like, right. it showed so much. But they stayed because, in because it because they they had no quality number two score, despite right. what people may want to say about Michael Porter Jr. And we've been saying this consistently, consistently. Right. He has not taken that next step. And you have to think about it also is like he's so the, his first year he was out right yeah he was out injured he was out second year i think he came off the bench yep now they've implanted him they've implanted him in the starting lineup and he's taking strides obviously he's taking yeah, those he's strides he's making improvements yeah but, i mean it, but the type like, of come on he made the right improvements in the regular season. Doc and Prof continually say this every single year. It doesn't matter what you do during the regular season. Where you really make your name is in the playoffs. In the playoffs. Yeah, that's where you make your money. Regular season is great, but the playoffs is where you really make your money. Uh, as we well know, many people have gotten paid just on one series. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, the guy went from nine points a game to 19. I mean, so clearly starting – has been good. He's, he's gotten all his numbers up. His shooting percentage is good. Now, he stepped up in a big way. To, I mean, he shot some big shots yesterday mm-hmm. um, and kept him in it, obviously, with Will Barton, um, who also stepped up, and somebody that is an underrated scorer, I've thought, for, for many years. Um, but okay. at the end of the day, I felt like JaVel, pulling JaVel McGee in this game and just rolling with him to me, you know, once they went on their run and and nothing else was happening, it's like, you got Bobo, you got Paul Millsap, you got probably somebody else on that bench that I don't even know. Like it's time to try something different. Uh, Cause Chris Paul, Devin Booker, they're, they're giving you all you can handle right now. And Barton exhausted. Compazzo giving you everything he's got. Exhausted. <laughs> Aaron Gordon is giving you nothing. absolutely nothing. nothing. Um, and Eight that was my points. problem. Are that was my problem. Me? I was like, get him out of there. If you're telling me that Bobo isn't good, sure. But your starting forward isn't giving you anything. So it's like, get him out of there. Call him a bum. Give him a towel. So he can hit the sad face Aaron, cam. Aaron and, for this series only averaged nine points. <laughs> get him out of there. Get him out of there, coach. You know, he just don't got it. You know, again, in Not Orlando. Scored, Compazzo scored 9.3 points a game. That was Bro, C- Compazzo is a great quality backup right now. Yeah, he, he going against a, a point. God. And maybe, just maybe, when I call CP3. CB3, when I call them the the last dragon reference, yeah, right, that you told me not to say because of Helen and YouTube and all these other people. Uh, Corn Hel- Paul, Helen's about to give you a European uppercut. <laughs> Corn <laughs> Paul, right? Corn Paul, Corn Paul, right? Paul, Paul, as in Paul. Why is Helen giving me the stinky face right now? <laughs> hey, it's, it's really close. But technically, I didn't say it. Since I said that, he's going on a, a tear. So he, he was there. He said, yeah, I ain't no corn pole. <laughs> so now, and I guess we'll get to the next two series in a second, but just one last thing. Sure. So it's hilarious now how people are now saying Chris Paul is the real MVP now. It is yeah. hilarious that people well, are saying that. Well, obviously... You know how people are. That's why I don't even. I don't like, even. Yeah, like that part was hilarious. Now, someone on this panel was saying CP3 no, deserves a lot more first place votes. No, you right. You right. That says I get it. The cleaner. The cleaner did say it. And I, said I remember you said that. the MVP was announced. I said he should be question? top three. I I. I Understood. We just wanted to make sure LeBron didn't get any, I think. <laughs> That's exactly what we said, actually. So moving on, let's get to the Clippers against the yeah. Utah Jazz. People said 
man, the Clippers is down 0-2 again. We used the FGC reference of we did. They're they're in losers right now. Like they really have <laughs> to fight through. You know, they have to do a punk esque type of run to yeah. make it to grand finals, and they pulled it off. Doc, one thirty two, one hundred six to get on the board. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know what it's going to take for them to, I don't know. I mean, obviously we talked about Nicholas Batum in the last game. He played much better. Uh, Paul George played better. Marcus Morris didn't. He played about the same. Um, Reggie Jackson gave him a similar output. Uh, They got a little bit more scoring um, from their bench. And I'll say based on what we talked about last game with the Jazz, their people scored the same amount for the most part. So it's just really a matter of just that little extra input from the Clippers. Um, Can they do it, you know, three more times? (laughs) I'm not sure. It's definitely possible, but I don't know. I I don't know what Tyron Lue is. His strategy is because I'm I'm looking at the people he takes out. Wait, like, Tyron Lue has a strategy. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because obviously you have R- Rondo not playing, which I'm sure people are like, "What the heck?" Um, I've already I mentioned. I only feel like people people complain about that when the Clippers lose, but when of they course. win, they don't say anything about it. Oh, of course. Uh, and it could be one of those things where he, they're resting him. He might play the next game. Um, I mean, obviously, these series are long. And just the fact they won a game, which I, I really believe they should tie it up. Um, but I don't know. It just I will depends. Say this. They just go I, so cold. I, I will say this. This may turn to a seven-game series, and that's in huge favor to the Suns. Wait. You mean the Jazz? No. For the Celtics. No. Oh, you're saying? Oh, well, that's because I missed that <laughs> yesterday. Oh, I thought I was like, I, I, I thought, <laughs> no, of course. What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, because normally we say, oh, well, you know, this series needs to end because it usually be to the detriment of the team that finished of the early. But in of this case, they said that yesterday, though. Absolute benefit. Well, I didn't hear that. I didn't care about. Yeah, that. yeah. They they said that yesterday. I, I, when they were... I stopped listening after a while when people started uh-huh. saying, "Oh, well, CP3 should have got more first place votes." No, no, I, no. So they said I, I was um, done after that. I couldn't. They were saying, "I hope." They were saying that they hoped that the Suns had an ice bath on the plane waiting for CP3 so that he could, you know, rest those 36 year old uh, bones. And hopefully the next series goes long so he can get as much rest as possible because he's dominating. Um, But in this series, if it does go seven, that's what I was thinking you were going with first. Who do you think that would benefit if this series goes seven? Because I know in the previous series, obviously it went seven and it benefited the Clippers. Oh, it's going to benefit the Clippers again. See, that's so rough, man. You think Donovan Mitchell would choke in seven? It's not so much as he'll choke. It's they won't get enough scoring. And that's so crazy. And that's going to be the problem, is the fact that they're not going to get enough scoring. Hmm. Because you're going to have uh, Game 7 Kawhi come through. PG, it's either hot or cold. It, it's really in between. It, there's no in between. There's no warm with it. Um, yeah, he's gonna give you twenty to thirty points. You know, maybe. I think I feel like P. I feel like Paul George can give you twenty, maybe to twenty five on every night. He's gonna score. There's an occasional where he goes cold as the T, but honestly, I feel like Paul George has accepted his second to third scoring role. They might need to get another person in there. Get rid of some of these other guys that are that are making too much money, or some of these minimum guys, and bring in another sol- solid score. Which really they shouldn't have got rid of Lou Williams, um, but bringing in Rondo, I understood why you'd want to do that. Um, but I don't know. I feel like the Clippers just go ahead and tie it up, and we go on from there. But before we run out of time, let's talk about the. All of a sudden, injury-ridden Nets. 
can we can we get here? So what the bleep is going on? Uh, the Death Star has uh, the exhaust that Luke shot through at the end of the first Star Wars film. <laughs> That's all this is. So it's a it's a compilation of different things. It's you know the injuries. Um, it's some really really rough rough play as well too. Like there well, were some weird things happening in that in uh, on game four. Like some weird things happening. Well, so it that's was, what happened was, also was, in game was, three also. Yeah, it was like they swallowed the whistle, but like, you're like, okay, that's, like, are you supposed to play soft or are you supposed to play hard? Like, this is the playoffs like, in the East. Yeah, like, like, like this is a foul. Right. This yeah. is a foul. Why yeah. are you not blowing your whistle? This is a foul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and to me, like, I'm, like, when I watched game three and I told you, I was like, if this is the best punch that Milwaukee has, they're done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you lose Kyrie on Brooklyn side. I'm like, okay, now we're getting into to asterisk territory. Um, you know, <laughs> I just had the perfect analogy for that. So Doc said that <laughs> after game three and Bucks was like, <laughs> I beg the pardon, sir. <laughs> right. Um, you know, no touching <laughs> you, oh, know? No. <laughs> you know like let's hold on there um but i don't know where this series is gonna go um without Kyrie, without harden i believe one of them probably will come back but kd is in a world of trouble i know he didn't expect this crap mm. uh but we got that tomorrow on tuesday tonight we have the Phil- philadelphia versus atlanta you got utah versus the clippers um, and we're back here tomorrow for Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. Um, but I know you heard this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And if you didn't, you can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends, where you can find this episode as well as all of our past episodes. Be sure to tune in tomorrow again for Dark Side of the Ring as we continue to look at those particular biographies. And we're back on Wednesday with more news, more analysis, and the read.